We are glad to be here another time in the house of the Lord. We give the Lord thanks, we give Him praise, we give Him honor, we give Him glory. Amen. The, the, the psalmist said, let everything that have breath. Praise, praise the Lord. You have, you have breath. <laughs> Amen. We have breath within our being and we can glorify God in spite of the situation, in spite of the circumstances. We know that God is still God. You know, circumstances and situations will change God. God is God all by Himself. He don't need our vote. He don't need our support for Him to be God. He is God. Amen. He, he is the unchanging, immutable God. And we bless His name. And we are glad today that we can come back into the house of the Lord and we can give Him thanks, give Him honor, give Him glory. Today we are going to go back where we left off for a little while. We're going to go back to Matthew chapter 10, where we close off last week. We're going to pick up from verse 24 of Matthew chapter 10. Praise the Lord. We bow heads and pray. Most High God, we want to thank you for your faithfulness, for your goodness towards us. Thank you for your protection. Thank you, Lord, because you love us with an everlasting love. And Father, we can come boldly before the throne of grace, where we can obtain mercies and find grace to help in times of need. Lord, even as we are sitting at your table, we are waiting, O oh God, for manna from above. I pray today that the Holy Spirit will anoint my tongue so that I can speak the word of God with power and authority. I pray that self will be removed and the Holy Spirit will take over. Lord, I pray healing will come into the hearts of your people. Those who are discouraged, those who are down in the pit, lift us, lift us today from the miry clay and plant our feet upon the rock to stay. Place a song within our hearts to sing. Oh God, as we prepare to listen to your word, the healing oil, the healing oil will be poured into the lives of your people today. Every burden will be lifted. In the mighty name of your Son, Yeshua, we ask these favors. Glory to God. So we are picking up for a little while in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 24. You know, as I read and study the gospel, the four gospel, and I see the way how the Messiah, Yeshua, he used to conduct himself and the way how Yeshua preached. And I look at the way how we preach today, most of us as preachers today, we don't preach the way the Messiah, Yeshua, preached. When Yeshua preached, his preaching was without compromise. He wasn't afraid. He didn't soften his message. And, you know, when you look at the text that we are going to um, open up today, you see that Yeshua was not a person who softened the message and, you know, he tried to pick something that the people will like, you know, to preach on or to touch on. Today, it seems as though we pick out things that we want to preach on, things that will get people excited, and, you know, things that people love. And the reason why Yeshua could have preached that way is because he was anointed by God. Isaiah chapter 62, uh, 61, sorry, said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel. And if we today, as preachers, if we want to preach like the Messiah, uncompromisingly preach the word in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, uh, with all our suffering and doctrine, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the anointing of God. We need that burden removing, yoke destroying power of God upon our lives. And this power is available to all of us. Amen. He promised that he would fill us, baptize us afresh with that anointing. You know, and as I open up the word of God today, I just pray that God's anointing will be upon my life, even as I try to expound on the word of God. Now in verse 24, he said the disciple is not above his master. This is Yeshua. He is putting it plain before his disciples. And he's saying to them, you are my disciples. And the word disciple means learner, trainer. 
You are the learner, I am the master. And the learner is not above the master. He's laying it on the table and he's telling them that they are his disciples. In the book of John, um, I think it's chapter 8, it tells us, Then said Yeshua to those Jews that believe on him, If you continue in my words, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth that you know shall make you free. It is not just the disciples during the time of Yeshua were disciples of his. We are his disciples today. If you acknowledge your sins, if you repent of your sins, you confess your sins, you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are a disciple of the Messiah. And all of these things that he's saying here to his disciples apply to us today. So he tells us the disciple is not above his master. And what this is saying is that we have to put God first. We have to put God first in everything. We have to, the, the, the scripture said, in all of our ways, what? Acknowledge Him. And He will direct our paths. We have to acknowledge Him, put Him first in everything, every aspect of our life. He has to take first place. And this is what He's saying here. You know, the disciple is not above the, His Master, nor the servant above His Lord. He's saying that the servant is not above His Lord. Amen? We are his servant, and he is our Lord, and he is above us. It means that we have to give him worship. We have to be subject to him. We have to humble ourselves under the mighty hands of God so that he can exalt us in due time. It is enough for the disciple that he, uh, that he should be as his master. So what Yeshua is doing here, he set uh, a limit. And he placed a bar and he said, it is enough that the disciple should be as his master. We can reach that limit. We can reach that place where we can be as our master. We can be like Christ. And as I look at the text, there's not a whole lot of people who wants to, you know, follow Christ in that kind of way. Who wants to live like him. Who wants to stand for the things that he stood for. People who wants to suffer the way how he suffered. Most of us today, we want to be like Christ in only one way. We want to be like Christ in the way that he works miracle. Most of us, all we want to be like Christ as is to work miracle. We want to see and experience miracles in our life, miracles in our ministry. But here, what the scripture is saying here, we have to be like him. We have to live like him. We have to stand for the same thing that he stood for. We have to be uncompromising. We have to live like him. As the Apostle Paul declared, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. And it tells us in verse uh, uh, 25, if they have called the master, uh, let me go over that again. It is enough for the disciples that he should be as his master and the servant as his Lord, if they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? So what Yeshua is saying here, the master of the house, he is our Lord, he is our master, and he is the master of the house. And what he says is that if they call him Beelzebub, how much more they're, they're going to call us, his followers, they're going to call us worse. And back in the day, Beelzebub was another name for Satan. Uh, the word there, Beelzebub, it means Lord of the fly, Lord of the dwelling. And it was a derogatory term. It was a derogatory term that they were using here against the Messiah. When Yeshua was here on earth, they called him all kinds of different names. You know, they were telling him, well, you know, you don't know who your father was. And you are after, your father is the devil. And they will tell him all of these derogatory terms. And what he's saying here, if they treat him in that way, they're going to treat us the same way. Because we are members of the same household. We belong to Yeshua's household. 
And the same treatment that the world gives to our Messiah is the same and even worse treatment that they're going to give to us. And the scripture tells us that we're not supposed to be surprised when we are prosecuted, when we are, you know, uh, experience, you know, hardship from the world. We are not to be surprised. The scripture said, taking that strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try us, we must be prepared to suffer. We must be prepared to experience some of the things that our Messiah, the Lord Yeshua, he went through when he was here in earth. They call him Beelzebub so that they can degrade him and bring him to a, a, the, the lowest level. And what he's saying here that the people that belong to his household, do you belong to the household of Yeshua? If you are a member of his household, you are going to suffer things that he suffered. Praise the Lord. And it tells us in verse 26, Fear them not therefore. So what he says is that if we are willing, if we are prepared to stand for the things that he stood for, if we are prepared to be uncompromising like him, what he's saying is that we are going to suffer. The world is going to persecute us. And what he said, when these persecution comes, he tells us that we ought not to be afraid. Fear not. Don't be afraid. Amen. Scripture says, fear not. Glory to God. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. So what he said is that all of the things that are covered, all of the things that is hidden in secret, God is saying here, Yeshua is saying that these things is going to be revealed. And you know, as we live day by day, we are seeing things that, are, that was hidden, seeing these things come into light. It was a month ago, I think, we have it all over the news, and it continues to be on the news, of uh, the suffering of all of these, um, you know, native kids. Anybody following the news? You know, all these kids, native kids, Indian kids that were killed by European people right here in Canada. And I think it was yesterday I'm hearing in the news that even in the United States, see as though there are grave sites, unmanned grave sites in the United States of all of these children that was killed by European people. Now, what they're telling us here is the Catholic Church. They're trying to put the blame on the Catholic Church and they're trying to get the Pope to apologize. But even though the Pope apologized, it is, it, it's just a band-aid. Because that is not the Catholic Church trying to kill native kids. According to what I'm seeing, that was the European establishment trying to kill out the, the native kids. And what they said, they were trying to kill uh, the, 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 the Indian in the kid. They were trying to get these Indian kids to become Europeans. They want them to talk like Europeans. You know, they want them to forget their culture, forget their language. And we see that these, all of these things is coming to light. And you know, and, and, and my, my thoughts or my question around these things when I see these things, all of these wickedness that these people have done to the, these little children, whether or not, if God is going to hold them accountable, you think God is going to hold them accountable? Yes, this is what the Bible is telling us here. When you talk here about things that are covered, that is going to be revealed, he's talking about accountability. And it is not just in the day of judgment that people have to give account for the wickedness that they have done in this life, but also in this life. Some of the things that are done by people in this life, God is going to make them or hold them accountable for some of these wickedness that they, they are doing. And, you know, we have seen all of these things that have been revealed in our time. You know, look again, we, uh, we see right now they're in the process of changing uh, Dundas Street here uh, in, in Ontario, in Toronto. They're in the process of changing Dundas Street name. Because they discover that this man, Henry Dundas, who they eulogize, he's eulogized here in Ontario, they, you know, named Dundas Street. Dundas Street is one of the longest streets that we have here in the city, stretched from way 
up, I think he go all the way out to Oshawa too, a part of it. But it starts from Scarborough, out to Mississauga, even out to, I think it's Oakville. And I think it turned into Highway 5. And this man, Henry Dundas, his name is on all of these street corners. His name is on Young Dundas Square. Even some of the water towers that we have over the city. You know, his name is upon it. But this man was a racist person. This man was a, a slave, he was dealing in slavery. And not only that, he was a slave owner. And what he did, according to what the, the history is revealing to us, is that this man delayed. He delayed the abolition of slavery in areas where the British was controlling for 15 years. So all of us here today, our ancestors was, you know, uh, affected by the decision that this man Henry Dundas made. Henry Dundas, he delayed slavery in places like St. Vincent, Grenada, Barbados, you know, all of the Caribbean islands, Haiti, uh, all of these places. He delayed slavery abolition by 15 years and still they make uh, European people eulogize this man and make him a hero. And it's the same thing we see when you, you do some more digging, you'll see men like, you know, Henry Morgan, so Henry Morgan, who was a pirate. Give a read history book and, and, and see Henry Morgan. Henry Morgan was a pirate in the Caribbean. Have ships going around and hijacking other ships, stealing people gold, silver and gold. And we see where the, the, the Queen of England anointed us as Sir Henry Morgan. And he became the governor of Jamaica. Governor of Jamaica. How about Francis Drake? So Francis Drake, all of these men were pirates. And the, the, these European authority, they recognized them and anointed them. You know, Walter Raleigh and all of these guys, you know, was wicked men up and down, you know, uh, areas of, of, of the sea and they hijacking, you know, boats with gold, taking it back to England. But because of the fact that they were European, they were English men, it doesn't matter what wickedness that these people do, they were still recognized as, you know, uh, more or less like saints. They deified them. But according to what the Word of God is telling us, all of these things is going to be uncovered. And the time will come when these people will have to pay. If God is a just God, and we know He is, all of these wickedness that is done by these European people over the last 600 years, to the Indians, to the native people in Australia, to all of you know the black people that come out from Africa, to the Chinese people, and all of these different you know people of color, all of these wickedness that is done to them, God is going to hold them accountable. And you know when I look, you know what is going on in the world today. I don't know if you guys saw in the news right now in Europe, they have so much disaster going on in Europe. Flooding, so many people missing. And I'm asking myself the question, it is nature. Start repaying these people for some of the wickedness that they have done to other people throughout the world. Even right now in Canada, we see, you know, out, I think it's Alberta side out there, they have so many fires that is going on. You know, I think it's two weeks ago, there was one city that people just had a few minutes to evacuate because the city totally burned to the ground. So what we are saying is that God is not asleep. And wickedness that people commit in this life, God is going to hold them accountable. And this is what the text is telling us here. Things that are covered, they are going to be revealed. Bless the Lord. Fear them not therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hidden that shall not be known. All of these hidden things, you know, they're going to be revealed. They're going to come to light. And the word of God is being fulfilled. And it tells us in verse 27, What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in the light. So what he's saying is that the things that he speak to his disciples when they were in you know, a room by themselves, speak it in the light. Go outside in the public and publicize it. Don't be afraid to publicize the things that he speak to you, to them, when they were in private. 
And, and he said, and, and what you hear in the ears, that preach ye upon the house top. Preaching upon the house top means that we're not supposed to compromise. What the Lord, what Yeshua is saying here to his disciples, don't compromise on the message that I give you. Don't soften the message. Don't put on a muzzle when you proclaim the message. Go up on the house top. Back in the day, they didn't have a microphone. Like what we have today, you can, you know, um, attach, you know, different speakers and, you know, get uh, sound go into the community. When you have something to broadcast, you have to go up on your house roof. Go up on the, the, the house top and you broadcast it. And what, what he's saying is that we're not supposed to compromise. We're not supposed to be afraid to, to proclaim the truth. When we know something is true, we're not supposed to compromise to declare it. Go up on the house top, he said to his um, disciples, praise the name of the Lord. The things that you hear in secret, that preach ye upon the house top. And fear not them which kill the body. So those of us who want to proclaim the truth, what he says is that we're not supposed to fear the people who can kill the body. Because after they kill the body, that's all they can do. You know, my age, I, I'm not afraid of anybody anymore. I remember when I was coming up here to Canada about 35 years ago, I took uh, Air Canada from Barbados. And I think it probably had maybe close to 250 passengers on that plane. And when I look around, it seems as though I was the oldest, oldest black person on that plane back in the day. And I was so afraid. <laughs> in the midst of all of these European white people, <laughs> I was so afraid. They offered me food. Back in the day, they used to give me good food on the plane. <laughs> they offered me lunch. You know, whatever the nice things to eat, give it, you know, ask me to eat. I don't want it because in the midst of these people, I'm feeling so, you know, I'm feeling so afraid. You know, they, 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 they came around and they give you the, 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 um, the, the air phone to watch the movie. I don't want to watch any movie. I just sit down there like, if, you know, like if somebody was going to, you know, I'm going to melt away. <laughs> You know, from Barbados to Canada, I didn't even get up and use the washroom because I was so afraid. But then I came here, and then when I start digging into history, and I see all the suffering that my ancestors go through on the European people, and they still survive. I said to myself, there is nothing more that they can do to me than they already done to my ancestors. So I'm not going to be afraid of anybody anymore. And where the truth is concerned, even though somebody has to take my hair off by speaking the truth, it doesn't really matter to me at this point. And this is what the Word of God is saying here. When we discover the truth, we ought not to be afraid to declare the truth. In verse uh, uh, 28, and fear them not which kill the body. So even though they're going to kill the body, how much of our people who tried to declare the truth. They killed him. Look at Malcolm X. Tried to declare the truth. Killed him. All of his, I think it was about six of Malcolm X's brothers who were standing up for the truth. Killed him. Malcolm X's father who was standing up for the truth. He was standing up with Marcus Garvey. You know what he did? They took him and they beat him and they, you know, I guess they, they killed him and they take him and they put him on the train tracks. And the train came and sliced him in half. You know, look at uh, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. We have been killing all of these guys. Look at uh, the, the Black Panther Party. All of those young men who was in the Black Panther Party. We have been killing them. You, you, you speak the truth. You stand up for justice. Call for, for righteousness and call for justice. You have to be prepared that you're going to lose your life. Is that they going to take your life or they're going to scandalize you to the point that your character is going to be destroyed? I remember years ago when we just came here in Canada, there was a guy named Dudley Laws. He was a Jamaican brother. He used to stand up for a lot of black people in Canada here in Ontario back in the day. You know, he was the oldest voice that we had. He would stand up for 
black people when something happened, police abused somebody. I remember uh, down in Lansdowne and Queen, there was this guy, I think it was Donald Soon, whatever his name was, he was a guy that had a med- uh, mental issue, and the police killed him. And I remember he, Dr. Laws came up and he stood up for this man. Dr. Laws was standing up for um, black people in the black community. You know what the establishment did? They scandalized him. They set him up and said he was taking people, illegal aliens from, um, you know, Toronto, from Ontario, crossing them over into the United States. I don't, I don't believe that was happening, but because of the fact that they want to, they want to scandalize him because of what he was doing. So what I'm saying is that if we are prepared to stand for the truth, we must be ready to suffer, even to the point of dying. And this is what the Word of God is saying here. 28, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So there is one that we have to fear. The person is Almighty God. As I said before, at this point, I'm not afraid of man. The oldest person I'm of, I fear is Almighty God. I am not afraid of any man. There is nothing man can do to me except hurting the body, destroying the body. After they finish destroying the body, they can't destroy the soul. And this is what Yeshua is saying here. That is the person that we have to fear. And brethren, you might say, well, you know, I don't think anybody's going to kill me. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Time is changing. <laughs> Glory to God. Time is changing. Amen. <laughs> Bless the Lord. As I close up, it says, Allah, no, no, at the end of verse 28, it, it said, but rather fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. God is able to destroy the soul and the body. And when he's talking about hell, he's not talking about, you know, uh, the grave. Because some people interpret hell as the grave. This is talking about the lake of fire. The Bible says that the wicked shall be thrown into hell. And all the nations that forget God. And people who forget God, people who are wicked in this life, who abuse other people, God is going to hold them accountable. They are going to suffer in this life, and in the life to come, they are going to suffer also. And that is the reason why, brethren, we have to treat people well. I am not responsible for the way people treat me. You are not responsible for the way people treat you. You are responsible for the way that you treat people. Even though people treat you bad, don't, 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 don't retaliate and treat them bad. You know, treat them well. Glory be to God. Because God is going to hold them accountable. Bless the Lord. Are not two sparrows sold for a father, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. He's talking about sparrows here. He's talking about um, these birds. Back in the day, they were selling uh, <laughs> two sparrows for father. And one farthing back in the day, it was a quarter of a penny. And according to what Luke tells us, they, 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 they give a deal on the sale of these sparrows. It was five sparrows for two pennies. And what Yeshua is saying here, even though these boards were so cheap, it was cheap food. That was the food of the day, you know, that people could have afford. And what he said is that, even though these sparrows were so plentiful and they were selling them cheap, every one of them, God cared about them. God knew about these sparrows and he's making a comparison here and he's trying to tell us that we are more valuable than these sparrows that were so cheap. He tells us, praise the Lord, but the very hair of your head are all numbered. God said the very hair of our head is all numbered. I know some people don't have hair in the head, but still God know where these, <laughs> he know where the hair is still. <laughs> it is said that each person, each person have approximately from 100,000 100, to 150,000 root of hair on the head. And what God is saying here, every one of them is numbered. 
And this is to say that the Lord care about us. And it doesn't matter what is going on in our life, what the world might try to do to us. We have a God that is more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above all the things that we should ask. We have a God that said that the eyes of the Lord run it through and fro, throughout the whole earth, to show himself strong on behalf of those who sought for profit. We are the act of his eyes, brethren. I'm saying here to you today, this is not the time for us to be afraid. This is the time for us to stand strong. Hallelujah. This is not the time for us to give up on our faith, give up on our salvation. This is the time for us to stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made us free and be not entangle ourselves again with the yoke of bondage. Brethren, the Lord cared for us. It doesn't matter what you might be facing. It might look as if the whole world is against you. God is on our side. We are going to win. Hallelujah. We are on the winning team. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. I want to just thank the Lord today because we have all of these things that we can look at in the text and we can encourage ourselves. I'm going to close up there for today. I'm going to ask the musicians to come back. Before we sing a song, I'm going to have a prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. Most like God, we want to thank you today for your words. We want to thank you, Lord, because you promised never to leave us, never to forsake us. God, even in this trying time that we are living, when we are seeing, oh God, Lord, evil men and seducers becoming more evil, wickeder every day. Father, help us not to be afraid. Help us, oh God, to stand fast. Oh God, help us to hold, oh God, to God's unchanging hand. Knowing that you will never leave us, you'll never forsake us. God, we thank you because you dispatch your holy angels the ministering spirits of God who is watching over us. Give us the strength, O oh God, Lord, to stay firm, to stay grounded in the word of God. Bless us, O oh God, as we go forward. We ask these favors in the most precious name of your son, Yeshua. Bless the Lord.